everyone. Welcome to part three of the Manifest Your Best Life webinar. My name is Lysander Xanthus and I will be sharing with you today a, a bunch of hopefully helpful and insightful information that you can apply to your life. Part three concerns lifestyle. So in part one, we discuss the mindset of manifestation, how we need to change our state of being to align with what it is we want to attract. In part two, we covered practices and tools, um, different methods that we can use as a focal point for causing that change. In this part, lifestyle, I would like to talk about a little bit of the practical how do I make this happen in my day-to-day -day life sort of business? So, I will go ahead and begin. So, we are going to be kind of discussing this as going through a day. So, what do you do each day to live a lifestyle that encourages manifestation? Uh, a lot of these changes in ourselves are really big steps and it can seem kind of overwhelming or difficult to conceive in thinking about making these huge changes when really it's uh, not one big decision, it's a bunch of little choices we make every single day and it can, and change happens one day at a time. So that's why I thought I would cover this way. So let us begin with the morning. Uh, so the suggestion here is each morning setting yourself up for sex success uh, Setting yourself up for success. This actually includes a little bit of the night before actually um, So we will discuss this a little bit more when we get to evening But essentially you will want to spend the night before preparing yourself for the next day um, so that way your morning runs more smoothly. So, uh, first you will wake up in the morning and I advise waking up with enough time to actually be on time to wherever it is you have to go and to have a, a smooth and somewhat leisurely morning and uh, account for some time to yourself before your day gets, I, gets started. That could sound like a very foreign concept. Uh, some important things to keep in mind. Uh, this may involve having to wake up earlier, but it's important to not see this as a lack, like, oh gosh, I'm getting less sleep. I have to wake up earlier. Uh, this is, I just don't like this kind of thing. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that you are choosing to uh, change your pattern and to develop a new habit. Going to bed, uh, Waking up earlier means going to bed earlier as well, so you actually get the same amount of sleep. And uh, you have to remember you're making a choice to start your day right, and not focus on feeling like you're getting less sleep. Uh, I know that some of us have additional responsibilities, like children or a spouse. Um, if uh, the other parent is available in your situation, I would suggest having a conversation about what it is you're trying to do for yourself and asking your partner to do their share of the rearing. Um, if they can take, so if you want to wake up early, you might have, have to start going to bed at like 8. So you may ask your partner to be responsible for putting the family to bed, but that you will be responsible for getting them up in the morning since you will be the one waking up earlier. Just as an example, um, uh, for some of you that won't be an issue at all. So it's just still important to acknowledge that with this as well as all the other things I'll be discussing in lifestyle that you are making a choice for yourself. Um, so yes, uh, waking up in the morning and I suggest putting your, some affirmations or positive reminders on your bathroom mirror, uh, as that is most likely one of the first places you will go in the morning so that, uh, so you get up, 
and you go to the bathroom and on the mirror are your reminders to be in a positive mindset or the affirmations you're working with and you have that reminder just to backtrack a little uh, something you can try to do when you first wake up in the morning is to uh, develop the habit of being sure your first thoughts upon waking are positive ones now that may sound strange but a lot of the times uh, we can wake up and the first things we think are, oh God, not another day, or oh, what time is it, or do I have to get up already, or I don't want to go, or uh, just uh, the sense of dread. And it will definitely take time, I think, to adjust that habit, but you can start replacing those thoughts with um, like today is going to be a great day, today is going to be full of success, everyone's going to be helpful today, uh, or your affirmations, or ah, <laughs> just like a sense of looking forward to your day, any, any sentiment that communicates that to you. Um, and after, so after you see your affirmations on the mirror, you can even read them to yourself if you like, or even just being reminded of them by seeing them is a good thing. Um, it's important to eat breakfast and what you have for breakfast, uh, maybe not worry about what it is you're having at this point, just be sure that you eat breakfast. And sometimes, uh, so you can either cook it or if you find that frustrating or not viable for your schedule. Uh, be sure that you um, set yourself up by putting foods in your house that are easy to prepare in the morning. Um, so eating breakfast is very important. It's very important for your health, for maintaining positive energy levels, and maintaining your mood. Our mood is greatly affected by our health habits such as how we sleep, how we eat, and our level of activity throughout the day. So breakfast, very important, may not seem related to a lifestyle manifestation, but it is kind of part of an overall system that allows you to be in your best state of being. And after you've eaten, groom and dress for a prosperous day or whatever kind of day you want to create for yourself. Even if you are not going anywhere that day, or if you work at home, it's important to groom yourself and dress yourself uh, because it does have an effect on your state of mind and how we feel about ourselves. So it's important to put in that effort of being dressed, uh, ready to be active in our lives and to feel good about ourselves. So. dressing for a prosperous day, um, wearing clothes that make you feel good, that are well fitted, clean, and put together. Uh, now, a positive mindset towards the day. Uh, for example, if you are leaving for work, it is very helpful be sure that as you leave the house and travel to work that you maintain a positive mindset towards work, even if you hate your job. <laughs> um, it is kind of one of those funny things about manifestation that if we spend all of our time hating a condition in our lives, it makes it a lot more difficult for that to be replaced by something we like. So it's very important to have a positive mindset toward your day ahead and toward work or whatever else there is ahead for you. So let's just use work as an example. Um, you can talk to yourself about how you're grateful for what work provides for you, that uh, you have a means of income. You can be excited that you're going to go and earn an income to provide for your needs or to provide for your family. Um, having a place to live and running water and electricity are really awesome things to be grateful for. Uh, it may seem simplistic to note those things, but they are important and not having them is actually very terrible. Uh, if you've 
I don't know if you've ever experienced what it's like to not have one of those things, but I have, and it's not good. So grateful for work, <laughs> no matter what work is. Um, you can be grateful for uh, anything that you can find to be grateful about your job is great. Think about those things. But sometimes if that's all you can think of, just be grateful for the income and what that income does for you, maintaining your lifestyle, providing for your life, being able to eat, to care for your family and provide them the things that they need or to provide things that they want and the joy that can bring them. Um, if you're and you can apply this towards whatever is ahead for your day. It's just like, a, I'm grateful for what's ahead and what it will bring me. I'm grateful to be at home and to have the opportunity to relax. Or I'm grateful to be at home and to have some place to be that is my own. Um, and so on. Or uh, other affirmations I like to be positive about the day ahead is, everyone is always helpful or everyone is going to be helpful today um, or thinking about I'm excited to take some more steps towards my goals today I'm excited to live another day of my life uh, whatever that means for you it's uh, to start with those after you've had your morning um, so that is a good way to begin your day. Uh, that is a lot of adjustment on its own. However, if you are able to, an ideal time for personal time in the morning would be um, either between breakfast and grooming yourself or, or between grooming yourself and leaving for work or starting your day. And just taking 30 minutes to an hour or even however much time you have to just kind of sit and be and maybe uh, just enjoy your cup of coffee or read some positive material or just kind of sit in your home without that frantic feeling of what it is you need to be doing next. Uh, it is very restorative and it may seem difficult to incorporate that time, but you will find yourself better able to handle everything else in a positive way when you give yourself that time and you make time for you. You're worth it. So, uh, now you've gotten your morning, morning off on the right foot. Uh, now I'd like to talk about something that is good to do throughout your day. You can do this in the morning, at lunch, at dinner, or other times throughout your day, especially at work as you think of it or wherever you are. And this is checking in throughout the day. So I'm going to relate a little simple exercise that you can do anytime, any place, uh, whether you're someplace quiet or noisy, uh, peaceful or chaotic, uh, on a train, in the car, at work, uh, out at a cafe, anywhere at all. So what you will be doing is checking in with yourself and adjusting your state of being upwards and being mindful of that. So we're going to do this right now. Wherever you are, draw your awareness to yourself. You can notice your breathing. Notice your body and the way it feels to be in it. Become present with yourself. And think about what it's like to be you right now in this moment. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you hear? What do you feel in your body? What do you sense around you? Just in a general way, you don't need to list it out. It's just sort of a, a way to bring yourself to the present moment inside yourself. How are you doing? What is it like to be you right now?
this awareness is very important. It's a very simple thing, but it is a way to check in with where you are at right now, what state of being you are existing in. In part one, we discussed how your state of being is what you manifest. And the first part of um, manifesting your best life, manifesting more of what you do want, is to be aware of where you are now, to adjust your state of being to one that encourages manifesting good things, you need to be aware of your current state of being. And in this way, you are checking in with you. And then think about um, your main goal at the moment or your main affirmation. So let's say, for example, um, maybe you want to live in peace or you want to attract more money or a loving relationship. You can think about, uh, remind yourself of one or two of your goals you are trying to manifest or the kind of day or overall life you're trying to manifest or your best self you're trying to become and think about what would it be like to exist in that state of being? What is it like to be the person who is making that much money, who's in that relationship, who is that person who lives in peace? And to imagine yourself into that state of being. So in that moment when you're checking in with yourself to tune into that energy, that state of being mentally and emotionally of the person you're trying to become. Uh, so what you're like in those circumstances. And so I advise you to do this several times throughout the day. Um, there's no particular number if it's easier for you to remember three times a day, like at each meal, to just check in with how you're doing. Or if you feel that you are upset or that you're not in a very positive state, that's a good time to check in to see how you are and why and how and to just remind yourself of uh, what you want to manifest and to imagine that state of being for yourself. The, ne the next point is eating at the same times every day. So this is kind of like filling in the center of the day. It's important to eat not just breakfast, but lunch and dinner at the same times each day. Um, if it's something that works for you, you can also incorporate snacks between each meal and try to keep those at a similar time each day as well. Like I mentioned before, um, our health habits have a tremendous effect on our moods and our state of being. So it's important to eat at the same time every day um, because it'll help you to not feel a sense of lack because you have an expectation of when about you will eat. And if this is a way to kind of help avoid or alleviate depression and anxiety, because uh, our body doesn't like to be hungry. It doesn't, there's a part of us that will always be bothered by the sensation that we're starving. And it's not really conducive to a positive mood. And I'm sure that all of you have been in that place where you're hungry or maybe you, you don't even realize that you're hungry. It's just been a while since you've eaten and you're cranky and it's hard to focus and so on. So, you, so it's very important to, to eat all of your meals throughout the day and to try to aim for about the same time each day that you have them. Uh, it creates a, it's a kind of really primal way to create a feeling of abundance and reassurance that you know, you're safe and everything's fine, just uh, addressing those simple survival things of eating at the same time. So it's like, you know, there's food, all is well, as well as things like uh, 
blood sugar and maintaining the body's equilibrium, all these affect our mood and how well we approach the day. So you want to set yourself up to be able to approach your day the best way you can and to put your best effort forward. So that's also why it's important. these habits are important. Eating and sleeping at about the same times and being sure you get enough of both. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a bit dry. So this brings us to the evening. Uh, part of the end of day, end of day, that you may consider that could be helpful to you, is to set yourself up for success for the next day. Uh, ending the day with tomorrow in mind. So uh, examples of this could be cleaning your kitchen and preparing lunch for the next day so that you don't have to do it the next morning. Uh, cleaning the kitchen is helpful because then you don't have to do any cleaning. Making breakfast is very easy the next morning. Uh, setting your clothes out so you don't have to think about what you're wearing. It's just all there. Um, and uh, I'm sure you could think of other, other things you could do to make your mon morning move more smoothly. Also, when you do this, it makes things such as having personal time in the morning where you just kind of sit and be and uh, rejuvenate yourself more viable uh, because if you can do things the night before to make your morning more smooth, then that is less things you have to do in the morning and you free up more time. Uh, of course, it's just as important to have some time to wind down in the evening and personal time in the evening when you come home uh, or however your personal day goes. So winding down, uh, grooming at the end of the day and kind of being sure you get out of your clothes and change and make yourself comfortable. Really leave, leave the world outside, leave work outside if you are able and really uh, settle into your home and make it you may want to take time to make your home a comfortable place, a place that makes you feel nurtured and safe. Think about what kind of feeling your home instills in you. Uh, talking about the home is really it's whole, a whole other subject that one could really get into. Um, and I'll get to that in a moment, but just settle in, wind down, uh, do something that's relaxing for everyone that's different. For some people, watching TV is very relaxing, um, or reading, or just kind of sitting quietly and with a hot beverage or in the bath. Uh, wind down and let the day go. Uh, allow your mind to kind of calm down and for you to decompress from all the events of the day. And then, of course, get to bed. Uh, get to bed at a reasonable time that allows you to wake up when you want to. And uh, my suggestion is, is uh, likewise, when you wake up in the morning, you want to uh, create a habit of thinking something positive when you first wake up and to visualize a good day ahead of you. At night, you want to do something similar. As you are drifting off to sleep, you want to uh, perhaps repeat affirmations that, are, that help you feel safe and secure, that build reassurance and of kind of releasing the day. What has happened has happened. Now it's time to rest. Uh, no matter what has happened, worry won't help. And your sleep is incredibly important to enabling you to make the best decisions and handle all the situations in your life to the best of your ability. Uh, there was a time in my life where one of the affirmations I stated but while I uh, fell asleep was just, I am safe. I'm here in my bed uh, right now and I'm safe and everything is fine and so on. Wherever you're at, you can say something like that or just saying, you know, my family's here, we're all safe, this house is secure, this house is comfortable, it's a place of love. Um, you can think about uh, as I sleep, 
my sleep will rejuvenate me, all the solutions I need will come to me in my dreams. Uh, as I rest, I will wake up completely renewed and full of energy. Or I'm sure you can think of some positive things you can tell yourself as you fall asleep as well. So this is kind of a basic example of incorporating all these ideas into lifestyle, into how you live your life. And the most important thing to remember is that figuring out what works for you is a process. What works for you is completely individual. So what works for one person may not work for another. Everything I just said may not work for you. Uh, it's just sort of like a suggestion or guideline to start experimenting. And to be honest, I feel like the only way to figure out what will work for you is to just start trying things and making adjustments to figure out what enables you to live your life in the best state of being and encourages you to be your best self and encourages your growth and your change and uh, positivity in your life. And uh, a part of that is being patient with yourself and patient with the process and having realistic expectation, expectations of yourself. Um, just because you're not able to do everything I just said perfectly every day starting right now doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you're a failure or that you just can't do anything right. Um, or that you not being able to adhere to some schedule that you come up with means that you're a failure or a bad. Uh, adjusting to a schedule can take time sometimes. We don't uh, sometimes we need to make adjustments along the way or it takes time to learn those habits. And sometimes the schedule we come up with may not be entirely realistic for us and that too is part of the learning process. Is figuring out how much can we actually get done in a day? Uh, how long does it take for me to complete tasks or to get ready or what have you? So I encourage you to remember that to be kind to yourself, patient and understanding, and be willing to go through the process of figuring it out. Uh, even now, I'm still making adjustments to help me do better and better. So even when you do find something that works, um, you may still continue to make adjustments or try different things in order to see if you can make life even better, more enjoyable go even more smoothly and uh, that's what life is about it's about uh, growth it's never static so I think that is a positive thing um, so that's kind of an example of a day now I want to hit talk about some other points um, kind of like side notes uh, I mentioned the home a, a bit earlier where you may want to consider the way your home makes you feel. That too is part of the lifestyle. Um, think about all the things in your home and generally how the environment makes you feel, what emotion it evokes in you and how you feel kind of just being in the space. Um, even if you have a great space, it is good to kind of give it a lift once in a while. So uh, probably no matter who you are, you'll want to consider cleaning your house. Um, not just energetically, but physically cleaning it. Honestly, there's just no replacement for cleaning your home, especially when it comes to transforming the energy in a space. And uh, once in a while, you will want to do a deep clean where you actually move everything, and get all the corners and do all the detailed cleaning and so on and do everything and start from a fresh space and it's just like a breath of fresh air and it really uh, opens your space and your life for new things to come in and it's a very powerful act for manifestation. Um, you 
you may want to consider going through your things and asking yourself how your belongings make you feel. Don't go crazy and throw everything out, but you may want to consider um, letting go of some things that just make you feel bad uh, or unpleasant, or if you're not quite ready to do that, maybe shifting them to a garage or storage space that is far out of sight and out of your common living areas where you frequent. Uh, you may want to think about how the design of your home feels overall. If maybe it's it's too club cluttered, the colors are too heavy, or if you know just how it makes you feel. Um, there is a lot you can do without having to spend money and completely redesign your home, and it, that too is just kind of figuring it out. Sometimes the best the thing I found most helpful when I'm trying to figure out a new space is to remove literally everything from a room might be extreme because it's often easier to figure out what to do with an empty space and to bring in an one item at a time to create exactly what I want and then just store the rest or figure out if I want to keep the rest rather than trying to rearrange everything in the space. It's too hard. Uh, so that is a suggestion. Um, you want to think about the things you're trying to manifest or things that help you live your life better like uh, does your home make you feel safe does it make you feel nurtured does it make you feel successful or like there there is a free flow for abundance to come through your life uh, of course you could turn this um, this view on anything in your life like your relationships and uh, the clothes you wear and so on but that's really what this means as a lifestyle is really letting all the ideas you've learned about manifestation permeate your entire life because uh, everything is a reflection of your vibration is a is something you've manifested so just it it's important to work on the inside but you can assist this process by making changes out here as well that's kind of part of it so uh, now I would like to talk about a few notes we kind of went through like an example of the day which I feel like is um, very approachable I guess you could say it's easier to start thinking about little things you can do each day and just go one day at a time and that is very powerful in creating changes but I would like to note some lifestyle things that are a bit bigger than that. Um, your weeks, months, and years. Uh, I definitely su suggest starting with making new choices in your day-to-day -day life, and the rest does have a way of growing from there. And I feel like it can be too much to start with larger units of time and planning, at least right away. But uh, you kind of want to apply the same principles of how can you start and end your week in a way that is most helpful to uh, a lifestyle of manifestation and that encourages the things you want to attract. Um, thinking about e like a, if, if you have a typical work week, perhaps being sure you take time for yourself on your days off to really recuperate and also doing things during your days off to make your work week flow more smoothly and be more pleasant and enjoyable since um, you know the time you spend at work is still part of your life so you might as well do what you can to make it better for you. Uh, months are the same way preparing yourself uh, throughout your whatever cycle your life tends to go through whether it's like bills at the beginning or end of the month setting yourself up along the way for everything to go more smoothly you know what's coming ahead most of the time in regards to that so planning and setting things up to make your life go more smoothly and set yourself up for success where you can Obviously, life is life, and sometimes spontaneous things occur. 
Um, but when the rest of your life is kind of set up more smoothly, it can be easier to handle those unexpected things. Uh, each year is the same, thinking about where we want to go in our lives and um, thinking about the way we live and thinking if there are things we could be doing differently that would help us achieve our goals. Those are kind of some bigger ideas and I think it's really important to kind of uh, master the day-to-day -day living and habits before thinking on a bigger scale because uh, I think you will learn a lot in changing your life in that way and you can apply those ideas and what you've learned about yourself to uh, planning further ahead. Uh, so yes. uh, this is a fairly simple topic so this is this part is far briefer than the first two. Um, I would like to mention that if you would like individual counseling or life coaching about changing your lifestyle to reflect what you would like to manifest and to manifest your best life, uh, I would like to refer you to my teacher, Eliza Nanos, at Freedom Dream Coaching. Uh, she is a spiritual life coach and uh, can guide you in living your lifestyle in accordance with this. You're also welcome to contact me and I can advise you as well. Um, so feel free to message me and uh, message me if you would like to get in contact with Eliza. Uh, I appreciate you watching this and uh, thank yourself for investing the time. I hope that these tips have been helpful and uh, I would like you to take a moment here at the end to uh, write down or just think about any ideas that you've gotten during this video that you would like to try incorporating into your life and trying some new things this week and making adjustments as you go along. So uh, one last thing, there is an accompanying book and workbook for Manifest Your Best Life and it is available for purchase as an optional companion to this webinar. Uh, please contact me to find out how to order. If you are a member of my Patreon, patreon.com slash freedomdreamcoaching, uh, then these will be free downloadable files for you to enjoy. Uh, this concludes Manifest Your Best Life webinar, so congratulations, you completed this webinar. Now it is up to you to apply all the things that you learned to your life. The information works if you work it and incorporate it. Um, you may find it helpful to rewatch this again once in a while to refresh your ideas. And uh, each time you watch it, different things will occur to you. Different things will stand out to you. So uh, continue to grow and to change. And remember, your state of being is what you manifest. So, thanks for joining me during this. I look forward to working with you more in the future. My name is Lysandra Xanthus. Be blessed.